Minister of State for the Commonwealth and the United Nations, Lord Ahmed, has assured that British relations with Africa and other friendly partners will not change even after Brexit. Ahmed, who is also the British Prime Minister's special representative rather, on preventing sexual violence in conflict, sat down with my colleague Akiso Wendera for an exclusive interview. Here is part of that conversation. As uh, the Minister for a State for Commonwealth, I will not delve much into it, but there are jitters about the upcoming divorce with uh, the European Union in March next year. What assurance are you giving Commonwealth countries? The collaboration that has been there for years is still there, and um, they, they should be looking forward to business collaborations. It's something that Theresa May, when she was touring the continent, uh, came to Kenya the other day. She insisted that Africa and uh, the UK will continue to collaborate, but the GDs are still there. What assurance are you giving us, the Minister for Commonwealth? Well, first of all, you know, the Prime Minister talked of tariff free, quota free trade, and that's the principle on, on which we continue to work with Africa and around the world. I think. First and foremost, when we talk of this divorce, what is it? We had a referendum in the United Kingdom. A referendum is giving the choice to people on an issue which was a motive. It was something that we knew was some different opinions existed uh, within our country. But it was important that to let people have a voice. They spoke, and they, by a majority, and that's a democracy at work, voted to leave the European Union. What the Prime Minister and her team, and I'm one of them, have sought to do over the last two years, or since the actual referendum, is ensure that this is orderly, that it's done in a manner which retains the strength of our partnerships with the European Union. You know, as the Prime Minister herself says, you know, we're leaving the European Union, we're not leaving Europe, we're not suddenly going to the United Kingdom and say, hello, Africa, can we join up with you? You know, geography, that won't happen. But that doesn't mean Africa doesn't matter or Asia doesn't matter. It does. What Brexit also allows us to do is strengthen our global relationships and free trade arrangements and partnerships with Africa. But we're doing it in an orderly fashion. Because if you're a business in the United... I was in the city. I was in business for 20 years. You ahead. You don't want assurance just for a month. You want to plan ahead for the next two years. And what the Prime Minister has negotiated is that as we leave the European Union, there is much that binds us together. We need to ensure our planes continue to fly, go goods continue to trade across the European Union. And that will continue to happen from the deal that has been secured, that access Britain, but also in the context of Africa and the trading relationships we have, we have given that commitment to ensure that Britain continues to have not only the current levels of trade, that we grow, for example, with Kenya and the 1.1 billion that we have in trade, and there's potential to do that. Now, as far as our European Union partners are concerned, they also recognize that. I have always said and retained that what you will see ultimately is pragmatism. And the deal we have in front of us ensures exactly that approach. There are concessions. Tell me one negotiation when you sit down. I mean, I've got children. I have to negotiate with them sometimes, you know, and I can assure you my starting point may be there, theirs may be there, and you meet. I hope somewhere nearer my side, they're probably hoping I meet nearer that side. I make a simple example, because that's what every negotiation involves. As they become more complex, and that when we come into negotiations in business, negotiations bilaterally, and negotiations in this case between a country that's been in this uh, union for over 40 years, and suddenly you're trying to untangle yourself of regulating rules, laws, to ensure that what we have in the United kingdom is control of our borders, but at the same time protecting our vital relationships both within Europe but also beyond Europe as well. And I believe after we've left the European Union in March that the future will be a bright one. Um, there are always sitters, to use the term, you, I used to be in the city of London, you know, I worked in financial services. When the United Kingdom chose not to join the single currency. There were many people who said this is the end of the city of London, the United Kingdom will no longer be a centre for financial services, no people, no companies will invest in the UK. They were wrong. The euro wasn't the currency that people perceived. United Kingdom's economy continued to grow. You know, we're the fifth largest economy in the world. That doesn't happen by accident. That means we've invested in our people, we've invested in services, we've invested in technical skills, and there's much we will continue to enjoy in terms of security collaboration, in terms of safety and 
aviation security with our European partners, and yes, trade as well. But we're at an important decision, an important crossroads. The Prime Minister has worked very hard and led from the front on this important relationship, and it's now over to my parliamentary colleagues. And I hope what emerges at the end of this process is something which is not only satisfactory but positive for the United Kingdom and for the European Union, but also within the context of the Commonwealth. The assurance I can give you is this, that the Commonwealth matters. When you do trade with the Commonwealth, we trade on the basis of common laws. We trade on the basis of common languages, common systems, common education systems. Those things matter. Costs are lower by 19% when, you know, as a former businessman, I can assure you, if you had a contract based on the same legal systems and laws in the same language, you immediately lower your costs of doing business. Those are the things we value within the context of the Commonwealth and beyond. And I look forward to... ...which has a... ...across the Commonwealth, and we look forward... Well, that is just a short excerpt with the um, Commonwealth. That is the Minister of State for the Commonwealth and the United Nations. We'll definitely get you the whole interview, the whole conversation later on in our subsequent bulletins right here in Bottom Line Africa. Let's take a short break, though. We'll leave you with Destination Africa. Obviously, a lot more on the other side. Just stay with us. <laughs>